Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Assigning Black and again asking you to hit that share button just like I did last time um, and for the same reasons. This is part two of uh, B1 versus CISPIM, the uh, genetic decisions and destiny of black people. There's one other thing I wanted to mention because I don't want to make any one video too long. And by the way, uh, the background music that I will be playing from now on, inshallah, has been selected for its uh, prevalence of percussion and its absence of wind and string. Um, so uh, that being said, and that's because, of course, wind and string is controversial at best, but I'm of the school that it is actually forbidden. Um, Whereas I don't have, I'm not aware of such a, um, a prohibition on percussion. And frankly, if you are aware of a possible interpretation of a prohibition on percussion, don't send that to me. Because when you start delving into interpretation, I automatically suspect those who always take the strictest interpretation um, and, and assume prohibitions unless something is allowed. This being said, let me get to it. What I did not cover in part one was the idea of genetic purity. Um, we black folks, because of our DNA, don't have to worry about really disappearing, per se. Um, the only way that we would disappear is if we intentionally chose to dilute ourselves. Or if we became reckless and we gave our seed to women uh, who come from cultures that don't value our phenotype right off the bat, and then these women um, raised our kids and our grandkids later to try to breed themselves um, in a way so as to remove our phenotype. Now, this could happen if you're not careful. This could. But I want to point something out about uh, these people who are um, really into the idea of genetic pedigree and, and purity. First off, within the African continent, no one is purely of one African background or another. The East African has West African DNA and vice versa. This happens. Usually when a people look down on another people, their individuals actually have DNA from the group uh, upon whom they look down. And this is sad, but it usually does happen. I would challenge people uh, to get DNA tests done. You hate a people, you're probably going to find out you got some of the DNA. Might as well just go ahead and, and, and assume that you got it. Also, the other thing is this. I've seen this here in the peninsula where I'm living. These people, especially when you get away from large cities, they're very, very into pedigree. They marry within a tribe. When you have a severely enforced endogamy like this, what winds up happening is the opposite of a dilution. What you have is a recombination of the same old DNA. After generations of this, for one, usually it's cousins marrying cousins. And I'm talking first cousins marrying first cousins. That's usually what winds up happening. And that is the absolute closest blood relationship allowed uh, in a marriage, ironically. When you have people doing this, um, they're trying to keep other traits out. What winds up happening is that they keep out a diversity. By keeping this diversity out, they then become subject to certain health problems. Many of the Rowaley family have an eye problem, an eye issue, and it starts when they're very young. Um, many of the Ennisi have uh, vitiligo, and um, they're actually more susceptible to diabetes, which is generally diet-based here, but they're more susceptible to it. They develop necrosis of their extremities at a younger age. Many people from the peninsula where I am have an arm that does not work or a leg that does not work, a hip that does not function. So their walk, their gait uh, becomes uh, problematic. Um, their teeth uh, get crooked more easily. Um, they're generally speaking not as strong. These are very brave people. They don't run from conflict. But physically speaking, they're not the strongest in the world. Um... They tend to think that darker skinned people are stronger, but that actually has more to do with the genetic diversity than it does to do with the, uh, the color of the skin. So at the end of the day, uh, it, it just boils down to this. When you become, if you are not careful, we uh, could fall into this. It would take a longer time because already our DNA is very, very diverse, even within the same families. Geneticists have said this. However, I do want us to be careful about this idea of some sort of purity because let's say that people from uh, West Africa say, okay, well, you know what? We want to be purely 
uh, uh, Loma as an example. Well, the Loma are strong as all get out and their DNA, I'm sure, is very diverse. But if they start saying this and then it gets to a point where only relatives marry relatives, then uh, you could end up with the same issues that happen here. Heart problems in young people. Retinal detachment in people as young as five and six years old. Arms and limbs that actually start off as normal and then they atrophy as, as the person gets older. And by the time they're 14, they're limping and, and one arm doesn't work. Looks like a chicken wing. We got to be careful about this. See, Africans have been marrying interregionally, not just intertribally, but interregionally for the longest. And this is one of the reasons why we have some of the best health if we don't F it up with a slave nigga diet. If we watch the soft drinks we take in, then uh, and we watch uh, how much sugar we eat and drink and drink. And, and leave alone that whiskey and all that other stuff, um, then generally speaking, we pretty healthy. So I wanted to point this out. We don't want to go that route of other people, some of our grandkids, so to speak, because we're the grandparents of humanity. We don't want to go that route of, of our, some of our grandkids that develop some very pathetic conditions simply because they just felt like they were too good to marry somebody else. And these, were, these came about because of reasons of poverty, because of reasons of DNA, people not wanting to marry someone else who traditionally had bigger lips or wider noses than them, or vice versa. We don't want to go that route. Generally speaking, we as a race, not just tribes, but as a race have been free of this. I think we should continue this. We should avoid that. And, and don't we should continue this and avoid the mistakes of some of our grandkids who wound up becoming a bunch of tragic desert mulattoes obsessed with uh, DNA and lineage because frankly they just wanted to look more white even before real white folks developed I hope that this has been a benefit Black Hassan and Blackout again thank you for your patience Asalaamu Alaikum